Hey friends, today we're going to talk about my recently DNF'd arcs. If you've been here before, you know that I like to do these arc wrap up videos whenever I have like four or five that I want to talk about. And I've had a giant, massive grouping of ones that I've DNF'd. So we're going to talk about those today. This will be, well, this may not be the final because I don't know what order I'm doing these in, but this will be the last video that I film with this shirt on. So there should be like four of them, maybe five. I don't know. I think it's five. Anyway, moving on. So um, we're going to talk about one, two, three, four, five, six books today that I've DNF'd that were ARCs. Um, we're gonna talk about who wrote them, what the name is, what percentage are DNF'd, and what I thought about them. Yeah? Okay. The first one is Long Story Short by Serena Kaler. I DNF'd this at 10%. If you see me looking over here, it's because that's where my notes are. I, again, I DNF'd at 10% and I feel like for me, this is the book that has made me realize that maybe I shouldn't read so much straight YA stories. Like, and what I mean by straight, I mean like contemporary without any magic, without any like fantasy setting at all. It was just like normal high school setting. And I feel like that is not my jam anymore because here's my thing. So our main character is definitely coded as being autistic, but it's never expressly stated that she is autistic. I looked at some other reviewers and other people were kind of saying the same thing and it's kind of weird the way that she's presented. That's a whole other thing for someone who is like within that community to actually discuss. But I do want that to be mentioned so that you know that. The way her parents handled the situation at the beginning of the story. So basically, she's 16. She's been homeschooled. She's really smart. Um, she wants to go away to college in another country, but she can't like do anything in person in real life. And so um, her parents basically tell her no. And she's like, but I want to. And they're like, well, if you can go to the summer camp and like do these things, this list of things um, at this summer camp, then we'll let you go. No, that's not how real life works. And this is why I think maybe I'm too old for these books because there is nothing. I have a 16 year old. She's 15. I have a 15 year old. Okay. And like, I did not give birth to this child, but she is mine. I've literally, I mean, I've been her quarter parent her entire life. Okay. There is nothing on this earth that would convince me to allow my 15 year old child to go to a college in another country where she knows absolutely no one. Like there's no list of, of tasks that you could complete at a fucking summer camp that I would then let you go to another country with no one that you know you're going to a college when you're 16. So everyone else that's there is going to be older than you. And you think I'm going to, I just, no, absolutely fucking not. It's not happening. I, just no, it's not happening. There is nothing on this earth that would convince me that that's okay. I was 18 when I went to college. I was 17 when I went to college and I was not prepared for college. I didn't even live on campus. Like I came home after school and I was not prepared for college. Like that is, it's a whole other world. This girl like can't even get through a dinner with a family that she has known for years because of her social awkwardness. But she wants to go to a whole other country with no one that she knows. And me who has social anxiety, who knows that like that is a big trigger is being somewhere that's unfamiliar to you and with no one that you know. I, I no. And as a parent, no. And I feel like her parents were like, well, we'll just let her go to the summer school. She'll never be able to complete these things. And so she just won't go. And I feel like as the parent, you have to know that no is a complete sentence. I'm your parent. I said no. You can wallow and be an asshole about it if you want. But I said no. I don't know how the book ends. Maybe she goes there and she decides she doesn't want to go to college because she's not ready. And her parents were right all along. I don't fucking know. But no. Just no. Okay, moving on. Then we have Fake It Till You Bake It by Jamie Wesley. I DNF'd this at I don't know percent because I started reading it and then I started skim reading it and then I started reading spoiler reviews and I was not having a time. Okay, so here's some things we need to discuss. I worked in a restaurant. I worked in the restaurant industry for a decade. Okay, 
I didn't buy this romance or this author's knowledge of working in a kitchen or how, I mean, I know it's a bakery, but same rules apply, I'm assuming, as a, as a kitchen. Or a knowledge of how to bake cupcakes. There is literally a scene where our main character bakes cupcakes for 20 minutes and they're burnt like hard rocks. And that's never gonna happen. Like cupcakes bake for 24 minutes. Like if you put cupcakes into a muffin tin and put it in the oven, it bakes for like 18 to 24 minutes. They are not gonna be rock solid at 20 minutes. That's not how it happens. It's not a thing. Also, this bitch was wearing heels in a kitchen. Can you say lawsuit and or death? Because I know when I worked in the restaurant industry, like we had to wear like grippy shoes so that if we fell over, we didn't die. I doubt that anyone's just like, yeah, wear your six inch heels in the kitchen. No one cares. You'll be fine. That's not how it works in the real world. I feel like this lady watched one too many Hallmark movies where there's like a home baker lady and she's like trying to do all of her shit. And but she's super cute and has to wear her heels because that's how Hallmark works. And then decided to write a book. And it's not very realistic. And I didn't like it. Okay, moving on. Also, the timeline. The timeline! It was, it, no just know who else, who else can I talk bad about I'm sorry this is this is I should not be this person but I am here we are bet on it by Jody Slaughter first off I hate bets and romances why did I think this was a good idea why was I like yeah it's about bingo I should pick that up did I look at the thing and go oh it's a bet book you hate bets and romances no I didn't do that I did not look at that um, I DNF'd this at 10% as well. Um, I DNF'd this at 10% and I literally just wrote, not having a good time. Probably should give it more time, but I don't feel like it. So there you go. Not Exactly What I Had in Mind by Kate Brooke. This book was not exactly what I had in mind. I deceived myself into what I thought this book was going to be about. I was wrong. So there's that. It was very drama filled, very miscommunication filled. I skim read a lot of it and then read some spoiler reviews, figured out what the epilogue was. No fucking thank you. That, that, that's a certified way to ruin a book in my opinion. Uh, was not having a good time. Not sure really what was happening, but it also was not a book for me. I can see why some people would like it, but not Jessica. Uh, I then DNF Double Double Twins in Trouble by Luna Graves. Um, I read, I think, 10%-ish of that as well. Actually, I might have read 20 I don't know. I read some of it. Who knows? Not me. In the first chapter, we get three separate timelines. We get like the girls in the office after they did a thing, but then the girls in class before they did a thing. And then also the girls in the past when they were little doing another thing. And it keeps jumping back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. I don't know what the fuck was happening. And they introduce like 15 characters in the first chapter. And half of those characters have multiple names. Like, not like their name's Sally Stewart. No, her name's Sally, but sometimes we call her Sal. And also some people call her Flower. Why? I don't know. But they do. Um, I think the twins' names are Bella and Donna. I can't remember that for sure. It's a witchy thing and I just, I was not having a time. I was lost and this is written for eight year olds. So, okay. And then we're going to talk about the final book that I DNF'd and that is Love on the Brain by Allie Hazelwood. I DNF'd this at 25%. We're going to talk about spoilers for this book um, because it's more fun if I do that. Um, I read the first book. I loved it. I had a fantastic time. I had some issues with some sex scenes. Don't get me wrong. There were some questionable things going on there, but I had a really good time and I thought the book was really good. I loved the um, demisexual representation because I'm demisexual. So I had a great time reading that book. However, this is my note. This is my first note. Uh, DNF to 25%. This is just the same bitch in a different font. And I can't tell you how much I was reading it going, I think I've read this book before. I think this is the same book. It's the same bitch, different font. Um, notes to self. I didn't even have to look up spoilers to know, and this is where we'll talk about spoilers, the love interest guy, let's call him Adam because I can't really remember what his name is, 
is the dude she DMs on Twitter and is a total feminist because she's DMing this guy and he's like the only guy that she gets along with. So clearly that's going to be the guy that she's DMing is the guy that's the love interest, but actually she hates him. There's like this big thing about he ate a vegan donut when she's a vegan. And I'm like, yeah, maybe he's vegan too, bitch. Do you know that? You probably don't know that because you hate him and he's a horrible person. He's an absolute stick in the mud. Uh, he's been in love with her this whole time, which is not a big secret, but you know, whatever. Um, he supposedly he hates her, but actually he's been in love with her because that's what happened in the first book. And so I imagine that's what also happened in this book. Um, he can't show his feelings because he's dumb. And there's going to be like a ridiculous third act drama that shows that all men in STEM are absolute scumbags unless they're in love with a woman in STEM. Because that's what happened in the first book. And that's what looked like was happening in this book as well. Okay, um, between that and the fact that our main character, I don't remember her name. I couldn't tell you. Um, oh, but my review can her name is B. Um, the infantilization of B in this book. Um, like she's tiny, she looks younger than she is. Like these are ways that she's described. She's very small, she's very tiny, she looks younger than she is. She's described as like a 12 year old. Um, she doesn't have body hair in places that older women have body hair. Like you're sexualizing a girl with a 12 year old body and then making some six foot five tall like Greek god think that she's sexy. And that is disgusting. And I, Kind of, I know it was like that a little bit in the first book, but I feel like sometimes you do things and you don't notice that you're doing it. But with the number of people who have said that about the first book and about all three novellas, she clearly knows that people feel like she's infantilizing her main characters and doing this really creepy thing that we don't like. And she's continuing to do it. And I mean, I grasp the concept that you should write what you like. And maybe she's this very, I don't know, I've never seen Allie Hazelwood. Maybe she's a very tiny person with no body hair and looks like she's 12 and has no breasts. I don't know. Um, so she's just writing herself. Could be. I don't know. But the point is, I don't want to read it. So I'm out. I probably will not read anything else by this author. I'm going to let the love hypothesis stand where it stands and enjoy it and love it and just pass everything else from now on. Um, because I don't think it's for me. That's it. That's all six books. Those are the six arcs that I DNF'd over September, October. There might have, no, it was all September and October. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Those are the books I DNF'd. Uh, if you want to talk about these books, hit me up in the comments down below. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything, anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hopefully in a different shirt.